ERC, quality service since 1972. Repairing TVs, console stereos, electronic musical instruments, pinball machines, arcade games, and more. Call 836-0454. This is the Weather Extreme video for Sunday, February the 15th. I hope your Valentine's Day was fine. And this morning we've got a lot of clouds, but if we look at Skycam, you can see that it's clear over Jasper as we look off to the east with the sun rising. Not clear at Decatur as we can see a good deal of clouds there. And not clear as we look out from Chiha, but it's kind of a mixture of clouds and a few clear spots from uh, time to time over the southeastern U.S. And I think we'll be improving the weather this afternoon. Uh, you can see on the surface maps that we have uh, installed frontal boundary across the Gulf Coast, and that's where the primary focus for rain was is going to be today. And you can see that there's a good deal of clouds over the area. In the upper atmosphere, we're still dealing with this fast flow with a lot of little disturbances, and that's going to bring patches of rain to the area this morning. I don't think for much of central and north Alabama we're going to see any significant rains, probably less than five hundredths of an inch. And for most places, uh, uh, less than probably uh, that, enough to dampen the, the dust, and that's about it. Temperature-wise, uh, the freezing lines down around the Tennessee-Kentucky border in uh, our locale, and a good deal of freezing weather over the Rockies and along the northern tier of the United States, but overall not bad for the middle of February. Temperatures around central Alabama range from the mid-30s in the Tennessee Valley to around 40 in central Alabama and then down in the 50s in the south. So we've got quite a range across the state. And radar-wise, you can see the bulk of the rain is down along the Gulf Coast with a few patches here and there, uh, even up there uh, north of Memphis, north of Dyersburg. And uh, Storm Prediction Center is out looking uh, day four. That's Wednesday through Thursday morning for severe weather possibilities across the southeastern U.S., including a large part of or almost all of Mississippi and Alabama. So uh, we'll be watching that weather system. This is kind of like last week in a way. Uh, there's some analogies here. It doesn't look like we're going to have uh, the instability is still in question. Uh, so we're going to be watching that carefully. But uh, might keep that in mind for the middle of the week. QPF-wise, uh, that storm system is the primary focus for rain, and that's going to bring uh, on the order of probably one to two inches, and that, that looks pretty good. I, I think more closer to the one, probably. All right, here's the 06C GFS model run. And here comes our little shortwave trough uh, through the fast flow today, and that should help to move the weather out of here later this afternoon. We'll see a few peaks of the sun. You can see that the shortwave trough is over at the Atlantic coast by this time on Monday, and high pressure settling in across the area over Illinois, and that's uh, bringing a little bit cooler air to our area on uh, Monday. And then uh, Tuesday, not much change as the high pressure moves off to the east, and we begin to see return flow into Louisiana and east Texas. Here comes uh, our series of uh, strong short waves, and uh, there was three of them. I think the GFS was doing much uh, the similar pattern yesterday with uh, kind of three. They'll be phasing up and helping to develop a long wave trough over the eastern half of the country at the end of the week. Uh, that upper air pattern translates to a surface low and with a cold front moving through the area. It looks like the main threat for weather is going to be from about uh, noon to midnight, I would say, right now for a Wednesday. Uh, the trough, as I say, deepens and sharpens up, and so that means we're going to see the thicknesses dropping. And uh, yes, uh, there's a possibility with wraparound moisture here and some cold air that we might see a few snow flurries, but it uh, doesn't look like anything real major, and especially the possibility of snow flurries maybe up in Tennessee more than in Alabama. Uh, there's kind of a um, double barrel sort of situation. One short, short wave trough is moving out of the long wave, but another one is dropping in on uh, Friday, and so that's going to keep the air cold, and that brings uh, some more snow possibilities to the Great Lakes, and that drops in, uh, re or intensifying and deepening the trough over the eastern half of the country, and so you can see the 540 line dropping all the way down into the Gulf Coast, and once again, moisture and the possibility of a sprinkle or a snow flurry, but nothing of any significance. Then by Sunday, uh, the long wave trough is beginning to fill a little bit. It's uh, uh, de-intensifying, it's weakening, and it's also moving off to the east. And that should mean uh, that the air begins to moderate, uh, so Sunday's still going to be a cool day. All right, let's uh, venture out into voodoo, and uh, the flow still remains pretty fast, although uh, we see uh, a... Uh, 
bowling ball, uh, a closed low out over the northwestern United States, but a short wave moving through, and that means on Tuesday we could see another round of some wet weather, uh, Tuesday perhaps into Wednesday. Uh, again, timing this far out is a little tough. And then on Saturday, the 28th, as we end the month, you can see another short wave moving through, and that means another round uh, of w uh, wet weather and perhaps, as we enter the 1st of March even, a little bit cooler air, as you can see the 540 line coming down uh, well into southern, uh, pardon me, northern Louisiana. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video. James will be back tomorrow morning with the next edition. Appreciate you tuning in. Hope that you have a great Sunday. Godspeed. Weather, 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 weather.